following all of the recent outages Cloudflare has had, you know, the December 5th outage. Before that, the November 18th outage. And we can just keep going back and we're going to see a lot more of these because Cloudflare has had, well, a bit of a rough year. Honestly, they've had a bit of a rough long time, but especially last couple of months have been pretty bad. Now, they know how bad it is, and recently they put out a post, Code Orange Fails Small, Our Resilience Plan Following Recent Incidents. And I'm not going to go over this today, but I'll leave it linked down below. And look, I don't like Cloudflare. You don't like Cloudflare. Not many people like Cloudflare, but they have a lot of customers, and... For the sake of the internet functioning, I would like them to do better. I would like there to be less problems because even if I don't like Cloudflare, it's not going to change the fact that a lot of websites are behind Cloudflare and when bad things happen to Cloudflare, it affects me. And that's the most important thing. But hey, if they don't improve, you can just get used to seeing as many outage pages as you want. For example, this one here, which isn't actually a real Cloudflare outage page because this is something that is custom rolled and you could do lots of fun things with this. As an example, catastrophic infrastructure failure, browser out of memory, Cloudflare error, host on fire, everything's cooked, what happened? There is a catastrophic failure. What can I do? Please try again in a few years. So the way this is being done is with a dumb little Python library called Cloudflare Error Page Generator. This has been floating around for a couple of weeks now. I'm actually late to looking at this, but I still want to talk about it anyway because I'm sure something is going to go wrong. And also they did release this blog post. So, you know, I'm late not as late as I probably could have been. Being a Python library, you can set this up in a million different ways, but the basic example is importing the web browser library, so you can just open the page in a browser, importing the library, generating the error page, and then saving that to a file, and then opening it in a web browser. And here is the file I use. So this right here, this is the regular looking example I showed you earlier with a pretty normal looking error page. The one below here, this is the catastrophic failure. This one comes directly from an example on the GitHub page. So if you want to go and use this directly, you can very easily do so. It puts everything into a dictionary of dictionaries. So you can just load the parameter in the render function and you're good to go. So the main thing you might want to control is these three separate blocks. The browser status, the Cloudflare status, and the host status. All of these are controlled independently with their own separate dictionaries. But they do share all of the same properties, those being these right here. The status, this can either be OK or error. If I set this to error and we go and run that page, now it's going to show that as broken. Now, because I was manually setting the color, it is still going to show up green here. If you are not setting the color, then it is going to go and use the default color for that error, as seen right here. So, all of these separate properties can be controlled independently. The location by default is set to you because that's what Cloudflare would normally say, but I could set this to be, um, uh, I don't know, Brody's computer, I am spying on you. The name of browser, so I could go and set this to, let's say, I want to set it to my actual browser. So we'll set it to Florp, and Florp is a funny name. Then you have the status text. That is the text under here. So this is how you have things like, you know, on fire or anything else you want there. We'll go and set it to cooked. And then, I don't know, let's set this to six and... Uh, 7F6AE. You know, I didn't expect that to be a kind of green color. So let's go and run that. And now it looks like that. And this can be done for each of these separate blocks independently. All of the same properties used for all of them. Now, for some reason, the default Cloudflare server is set to San Francisco. Not sure why they went with that. Is the Cloudflare headquarters there? That would be yes. Okay, that actually does explain why they went with that one then. Now, whilst you can mess with the colors, I think for most jokes you might want to do with this, changing the color kind of ruins the joke. 
The whole thing you want to be doing is making it look like a Cloudflare error page, but look like a dumb error page. If you change the color, I think it kind of ruins the illusion. I do like the option is there if you want to do other things like, you know, set it to be the background color and now the text is invisible. If you diverge from the Cloudflare colors, is it really a Cloudflare parody anymore? I would say no. Now, whilst it might be fun to mess with these individual statuses, there is more you can mess with. For example, did you know when a Cloudflare outage happens, this arrow actually moves to the thing where the error actually is. So if there's an error in your browser, it would actually point to your browser. If there's an error in the site, it would point to the site. Considering how many errors have been with Cloudflare itself recently, I always thought it just pointed to Cloudflare. And this can also be controlled. This is the error source. Right now it is set to browser, so it is pointing to the browser I was using. But we can set it to, let's set it to the host and then put it on the other side. There we go. Now this text down the bottom here, the what happened and what can I do, this can also be modified. So. That is with the what happened and what can I do properties. And you might notice here some HTML tags. And yes, you can inject HTML tags into this as well if you want to. It's your life. Do whatever you want. Um, it's a page that you're generating for your own use. So, again, if you want to do something stupid with it, you could just write the HTML by hand, right? Like, just do that if you want to. Or you can simplify it with a little script like this. With the script itself, you're not able to change the text, what happened and what can I do, but you can change the text under it. So what happened? Um, this is broken. Balkan, yep. What can I do? Um, nothing. Let's go and run that again. And there we go. A much more subtle change is what is down the bottom here, the Ray ID and your IP address. By default, the Ray ID is something random and your IP is set to 1.1.1.1. These can be controlled with the Ray ID property and the client ID. So let's set this to um, uh, 0.0.0.0. As you can see, I'm a very creative person. Let's run that again. And now we have the... I forgot to save it. Oops. Now we, <laughs> now we have what I just said. And to modify this bit here, this is done with the more information block. Now, for some reason in, uh, <laughs> in the example, it has false with lowercase. That is not false in Python. With a lowercase, that would be assuming a variable by the name of false. So make sure you, um, fix that because otherwise it won't work. And with this, it gives us the option to set both the text and the link the text points to. So let's set this text to uh, definitely, that's probably not how you spell definitely, not Cloudflare. Cl cloud, cloud fart, flat? Yeah, you know what, fine. Uh, we're gonna make sure it is not hidden so we can actually see it. And for more information for nothing, at all. So let's run that once again. And now it says um, Cloudflare, which was definitely not a spelling mistake, still points to the Cloudflare URL and says visit for nothing at all. The title in your header is controlled with HTML title and then the title on the actual page, the one right here, this is just done with title. And that's most of the things you probably would want to modify. There are a couple of other little properties, like you can change the error code, by default, it is set to error code 500. You could set it to a fake one or whatever you want it to be. You can set the time. By default, this is just going to use whatever your current UTC time is. And you can also set a little thing down the bottom, the performance and security in the footer. This little bit right down here. If you want to change it to something else. Again, you can have a different text and URL. Now, if you just want to try it out, you don't want to go set it up for yourself, see if it's interesting. There is also the live demo you can go and check out, but not just that. There is another thing. We also have the online editor. So this exposes all of the separate properties, so you can go and change anything you want. There's also some nice presets in here as well, like the myth of consensual internet. Browser, I consent. Cloudflare, I don't. Host, I consent. 
What happened? Isn't there someone you forgot to ask? What can I do? <laughs> you have server working, which is definitely a fun one. Of course, you have catastrophic failure. Empty just takes you back to default. And there is, I'm a teapot. If you don't know Erico teapot, um, that's a separate video. I think I already made that video, but yeah. You can go and set all of the properties here. And then you can go and either preview it in a new tab... I'm not sure why the background's not loading, so that's a bug they should fix. Or you can grab a shareable link, or you can save it into various forms. So there is the JSON form, there is the Python example, there is a JavaScript example, and it gives you the example as a static web page. So you can just go and save that and do whatever you want with it. Because yeah, at the end of the day, what you're doing here is you are generating a web page. So once you've generated the web page, there's no reason to keep this around. You can just go and take this page and I'm not going to say that you should deploy it on your website, but I'm also not saying that I'm going to stop you from doing so. Now, I found this post on Twitter with some fun examples, but the one thing I do want to show you is uh, this quote retweet. Now, I don't know if this is true, but this person is claiming to be the one who designed the page. If this is true, if you are the person, that is awesome. And uh, congrats for making a page 15 years ago that was good enough that it basically never changed. And considering the co-founder and CEO of Cloudflare said come back, I'm going to assume they probably actually did make the page. Unless they wanted to just jump in on the bit. I don't know. Either way, this was a dumb little video. Is this something that you would actually seriously use for anything? Probably not, but it's always fun to look at something that's kind of just inconsequential and just have some fun. So, there's your fun. Anyway, check it out. If you want to use it, check it out. Do things with it. That's cool. Yeah, if you liked the video, go like the video. Let me know your thoughts down below. Go subscribe to the video. And if you want to become one, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to become one of... These amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Stelly Berapay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and how long into January do you think the first outage is going to be?